Good Wednesday morning, and I want to say welcome to you for Waves of Hope uh, for Canaveral Port Ministry. My name's Mike Hoffman. I serve as one of the chaplains at the Port Ministry, and it's good to see you again. Uh, good to be able to join together with you today. And i um, very thankful that we're able to do this together every week, every day. And you get to hear from different people as we've walked through the Bible from Genesis right up to here to Numbers. And we'll be looking at Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 12 today. But just uh, very thankful for <clears throat> this week, especially as we here in the United States uh, think about our, uh, our special holiday that we have here. Probably the most special of holidays, I think. And in terms of our country, in terms of giving thanks and the historical picture of the pilgrims and their coming and being saved really by the Native Americans in that first year of, of their uh, pilgrimage here. And so thankful for that. But I want to give you, a, bring a greetings to you who are our uh, crew members, our friends who are on ships right now. And those who are back home waiting to get back on uh, the ship and back into your jobs. And we hope that that happens uh, in the coming year. But as we all are here and experiencing the coronavirus and COVID and all the ups and downs of 2020, um, what is there that you can be thankful for? Uh, whether you're overseas uh, in a different country, or you're a volunteer who's served at the port ministry, or you're just watching this, you just come to this. In this crazy year, is there something you can be thankful for? And I hope that in your heart, it won't take you long to answer that. Uh, whether physically you've been um, challenged or emotionally you've been challenged uh, this year with uh, fear and with the things that are going on and uh, but what is it I want to come back to that question what can you be grateful for um, I would invite you to take a moment and think about that say Lord um, what can I be thankful for what can I be grateful for what kind of gratitude can I share or express what memory can I go back to and think of if there's nothing right immediate in your surroundings that you can be grateful for? What is it from a memory, distant memory or recent memory in the past? How can I be grateful? What is that thing? What is something that I experienced? And try to be specific about it. Try to think about that specific thing that is um, a story of gratitude. I'm going to share this with you from uh, for me as a gratitude story. As I thought about this yesterday and the day before, um, I thought, Lord, uh, the thing that I am grateful for, what comes to my mind is a moment last week when my wife and I were sitting together and talking and um, she expressed this sense of purpose and peace. Uh, about where we are as a couple and our lives. Next month, December, we will celebrate 44 years of marriage, and I am so happy about that. But what I appreciated, what she told me, she said, Mike, with all of the uncertainties and things around us and things about our own being cared for and taken care of and all of those things and financial ways and all that, I, she said, I sense God's peace in this and his purposes in this and that he has us even when all the things around us are big question marks. And I thought about that. I, so I stopped and I reflected on that moment, um, not just as a simple memory, but I thought about it and I asked myself what was it about that moment that made it special and for me it was looking into our, our eyes and she engaging me with this sense of of wonder and thankfulness and certainty the certainty that god knows exactly 
where we are. And God has us exactly where he wants us. And in her eyes, looking to me and telling me that, that God has given her a peace about where we are and where he has us. Uh, I, I thought about that and I said, I asked, Lord, as I'm picturing that in my mind, where are you in that picture? And the immediate picture came of her sitting there telling me this and the Lord standing right behind her with a smile, just a sense of smile and pleasure of what she is declaring. And so um, that just gave me a warmth, a warmth sensation. It, it, it was an encouragement to me and I am so grateful for the fact that she knows that the Lord has us where he wants us to be. So that's my gratitude story. I want to invite you, take a moment to think about what is it, what specific thing, either recently or even from the past, that you can kind of dwell on, think about as a, a Thanksgiving story. And ask the Lord this, Lord, where were you in that that I'm thinking about, that story? Where were you in that? And then kind of sense of, get a sense of what is it that you're feeling about that story as you retell that story in your mind. How are you feeling about that story? What's, it, what's, it, what's the emotion that is uh, you're feeling about that? So that's, that's why I wanted to share that today as we think about our, our times this week of Thanksgiving. And we, uh, most of us will be maybe very different from most of our Thanksgivings where we have lots of family around or whatever. Um, and maybe you're just having it by yourself or with just a couple of other folks. Um, just be pausing and taking that time to give thanks to the Lord. Um, I've heard it said, and I've shared this before on here, that we learn from our experiences. The things that happen to us, our experiences in life, we learn from those for sure. But we learn even more when we reflect on our experiences. So I hope you will take time, even just for a few moments, to reflect on your experiences. And maybe write them down. So you'll have that as a memory too. Well, God bless you. We're here in Numbers chapter 14. And let me open with a brief prayer. Father, we give thanks to you for this day because you have made it and you have called us into it to live our lives today, to trust you for the day and to walk by faith with you. So I pray, Father, for all who hear this, that you would give them um, your presence. They would know it. They would, um, they would be able to sense that your peace that passes all understanding is with them. And Lord, for those anxious thoughts, and we all have those anxious thoughts, uh, Lord, I just pray that you help us translate those anxious thoughts into thanksgivings, making our requests known to you so that we might have your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Today in Numbers 14, um, you heard uh, yesterday from Chaplain Steve and from Mark and uh, Richard earlier, this marching through the wilderness with the uh, Israelites as a community in mass, the whole group being led by the Lord through the wilderness. Where were they going? They were going to the promised land and and you saw as um, the spies were sent out. And if you've been a Christian for some time and uh, you've heard the story, I'm sure many times, where um, they, the 12 spies were sent into the land and they were there 40 days looking and scoping out the land. And they come back and they give their report. And like any good church committee, they come back and give a divided report, right? Yeah, so, so they come back and give this report. Ten said, um, 
uh, well, first of all, the two said, hey, this is a wonderful land. It's beautiful. Um, it flows with milk and honey. That just expresses the richness of the land, uh, the land of Canaan where God was calling them to. And, and look, we've got these grapes, these huge uh, bunches of grapes, just to show you how fruitful the land is. But that was great, and the crowd was probably, yay, sounds good. And then all of a sudden, the, the other 10, what do you have to say about this? Uh, well, no. It, yeah, it has certainly looks good. But, and uh, they added, the gi there's giants in the land, as you know that story well. Uh, the giants are in the land. So here we come into Numbers chapter 14, and it says in the very first verse, the whole community began weeping. And um, they cried all night. And so there was this huge turmoil in the land. When the, the word giants came out, all of a sudden, fear grew large. And so um, you and I have that same, same struggle. You know, um, uh, are we going to um, live in our fear or are we going to rest in faith? And are we going to go with God in that faithfulness of trusting trusting Him? And here we see this in the land. So they cried all night, they wept, and 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 then they became angry and they protested and all and and they got to the point where um they they were even talking about let's stone these leaders, let's get new leaders, let's let's get out of here and go back to Egypt and and when that happened, um, Moses and Aaron fell on their face. And um, I don't think they were falling on their face, it says before the crowd, in fear. I think they fell on their face. Well, maybe fearful for what God might do, because I think they were all ready. God, please, in intercession. And you'll see that tomorrow's um, in the next chapel time. But so they had this, Moses fell on his face, Joshua and and. And Caleb, the two spies who came back and said, we can do this. Yeah, there's giants in the land, but you know what? They're going to be uh, like grasshoppers to us. They're going to be, they're going to be small because why? We have God with us and God's going to take care of those things. We can trust God with this. And so um, Joshua and Caleb say that and they tear their clothes as a sense, a sense of, of uh, repentance and a sense of, Lord, uh, this is serious and and that kind of a statement. But the people go on and they 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 want to say, Hey, let's get those two guys who thought it was so good and we're going to stone them. And and then God steps in in verse ten and says and says, um, uh, uh, No, I'm sorry, verse eleven. How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they treat me with contempt? Chap Numbers 14, verse 11. And that's what God saw, this contempt of who he is in his holiness. Um, and why will they never believe me? And so here is this picture. Uh, and Moses said, I, and God said, I'm going to just destroy all these people and we'll start again with the four people of faith, the people of faith in this, whoever has faith, that's, that's who I'll start with. But Moses said, Lord, please don't do that. And he begged and he interceded on behalf of a sinful community, a rebellious community. And, and, um, and then it said, um, and then Moses said, Lord, the, the Egyptians will think, hear about it. They'll know uh, full well the power you displayed in rescuing them. And, um, and he goes on to share that. But that's next. That's the next in verse 13. So here, I want to share these, three th these things with you. I want to go with this. Let's, let's, there we go. Let me get that up straight there. There we go. We're going to look at these things real quick. Uh, things of fear and things of faith. And here we see that, in terms of fear, verse 1, the people wept and they cried. Now, weeping and crying is good. It's okay. And um, uh, But here it was a, a weeping and crying not for 
but it was without God's in the picture. So they wept and cried for themselves um, because they believed it was all dependent on them. Whatever your circumstance is, it's not all dependent on you. It is not all dependent on you. You need to allow God to work in whatever circumstance you find yourself in. In verse 2, they protested, if only we had stayed in Egypt, if only we we had done that, if only, and they, they speculated and they conjectured and they protested where they are now in their circumstances. And so... Um, that was, that was verse 2. It said, if only we had died in Egypt. What a, what a thought. And then verse 3, they asked why. Why? Why, could, uh, why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Uh, so is it okay to ask a why question with God? Absolutely. Absolutely but not in the context of God can't do anything about my why, or I can't trust him even if he doesn't do anything about my why. All, the why is not to question God's sovereignty, his abilities, who he is in his character and nature, that he loves us and, tr and that we can entrust ourselves regardless of how we are physically, uh, or any other way, um, but the why, and we can ask God those questions, but we, in the end, are we going to trust them? But they concluded it'd be better if we just died. And in verse four, here's another fear statement. They plotted and said, they plotted to kill and let's go or elect new leaders. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. So verse 4 was another fear state action. Let's go back. And in verse 10, um, the community-wide talk and anger. The whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. That's how serious they were that, uh, in their fear was let's kill them and let's get new leaders and let's go back to Egypt as a, just a complete step of, of faithlessness in who God is and God's ability. Now, on the faith side of what we just talked about, um, verse 5 says, Moses and Aaron prayed. I, I shared that with you. They fell on their faces and they prayed. They interceded for the people. And then Joshua, we talked about too, Joshua and Caleb, uh, uh, they tore their clothes and they said, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. So there they talk in verse 7. It's a wonderful land. In verse 8, they said, God will take care of us. He can take out those giants. He can, he'll, he'll make a way for us. Um, Do not rebel, they said, against the Lord. And don't be afraid of the people. Don't be afraid of the people. And there's that statement in verse 9. Don't rebel and don't be afraid. That's the statement of faith that Joshua and Caleb said. And those giants are no match for our God. I want to ask you what circumstance in your life is no match for your God, for our God, uh, for the God of the universe. What is that circumstance in your life right now? And with all that's going on, there's a lot of things that could be uh, something that looks like a giant to you. Um, and so hear the word of Joshua and Caleb. God is able. God is able. And then um, the Lord is with us. So... I just want to say that regardless of your circumstance and my circumstance, the Lord is certainly with us and we can trust ourselves to him. As a new Christian, when I was 19 years old, way back, um, one of the very first Bible verses 
I memorized is one that you, I hope, know. Or um, if you haven't memorized it, hold it to heart and memory and remembered it and brought it back is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. and Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart today. Today, just for today. Don't lean on your own understanding. Lord, why is this happening? I don't understand it. And that's okay. That's okay if you don't understand it. A lot of things I don't understand uh, that become like giants in my life and I ask why, but don't lean on that. But in all of my ways, in all of my whys, Lord, why, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Just like he did, Jesus did with the, the disciples when he was about to go to the cross, he tells them in John chapter 14, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, many mansions, many rooms. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you so that where I am, Jesus says, where I am, you may come and be with me. And I'm going to come again someday and bring you to be with me. Isn't that a great picture and thought that Jesus has gone ahead of us and he tells his disciples just before he's arrested and put on a cross, and the trauma and, and shock of all of that, he's telling them, you believe in God? Believe also in me, because I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So I want to leave that with you today, and I pray that today and this week will be moments where you stop and have thoughts of gratitude and thanksgiving. Uh, whatever your circumstance, rejoice in the Lord because the joy of the Lord is what? Is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Say that with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so trust him today. God bless you. Have a great Thanksgiving.